welcome to this episode of Orient at Your Library. My name is Karen Knox. I'm the director of the Orient Township Public Library. And I'm here today with Beth Sheridan from the Adult Services Department, our head of outreach services, and with Suzanne Tyson from the Youth Services Department. And we are kicking off a series of wonderful programs for fall. I can't believe that fall is upon us again. Mm -hmm. And um, we are really excited that we're participating in the Orion Living Magazine. So the second issue should have hit your mailboxes at the end of August. So you will find all the programs for September, October, and November in your mailbox for those. Or pick one up at the library. Or check out the Orion Library's website for all the details. But we're going to share some of the highlights here today. And um, first highlight is that starting se Sunday, September 8th, the library will be reopening on Sunday afternoons from 1 to 5. That'll be the first Sunday that we're open again. Um, and that will carry on all the way through the school year. So we're excited to be able to offer that again. Um, and as far as September programming goes, um, we're going to start off with our series of community conversations. Is that right, Beth? Yes, we have two this fall, uh, one September 9th and one November 11th. These are um, a series of conversations that we partner with the Lake Orion United Methodist Church to present or to put on for you on social justice issues. We'll be talking about hunger, hunger in our community and affordable housing uh, this fall. Great. Join us. And I should mention, it's not at the library, it's at the Lockhart. So you can eat, you can drink, and participate. Wonderful. Yeah, so those are down downtown. Downtown Lockhart's Barbecue, yep. Wonderful. So those are always good opportunities just to kind of share in conversation about uh, these issues that are around us that we just don't take time to talk mm -hmm. about very often. Um, another issue that is around us is the need for blood. So the library does blood drives throughout the year as well. And the, our next one is coming up on September 12th. And the blood drive will be happening from 9.30 in the morning to 6.30 in the evening. So you can register online for that. Give the library a call. Um, and if you forget, sometimes there's even room for drop-ins the day of. So that's September the 12th. Um, then we also have a, a series of wonderful programs in our fairly new makerspace. Tell mm -hmm. us what's going on in the makerspace this okay. fall. Well, as you know, you can come in anytime some, some of the, and use the equipment. Um, and if you have any questions, look on our website. But we have different kind of equipment that people can use all the time. But we do programming there, too. Um, we're having a family makerspace night on September 26 at 6, and you're invited to experiment with, families are invited to experiment in a lot of different creative technology projects. There's stencil making and painting on Saturday, October 19th. Introduction to the Glow Forge, Thursday, November 14th at 6, which that is um, a piece of equipment that has proven to be pretty popular. You can have an image on your computer and it will uh, cut it into wood or plastic. So if you were interested in that at all, attend that one. And then resin mold jewelry is on Saturday, November 23rd at 2. And that was a lot of dates quickly. See our website for more information. Awesome. Yeah, so it's really fun um, to provide families um, different um, opportunities to come in and play with um, your hands and make things, um, mm -hmm. which is a new trend that we're seeing people wanting to do to be able to make things and gift them or yeah. decorate their house with mm -hmm. them or yeah. use them for different things. So um, be sure to check out those opportunities. That's wonderful. Okay. Um, on the opposite side of the spectrum, yes. kids like to take things apart, don't exactly. they? Exactly. And good way to make is to take apart. Yeah. So we are going to have a fun take apart day uh, where we're going to have different kinds of technology like the stopwatch. Um, see what's inside, see how it works, and learn a little bit that way. Um, cool. It is for elementary age kids, just for safety and tools. Um, and it's September 14th at 2 o'clock at the library. Um, and it'll be a great way to learn, not to make, but to take apart. That so sounds really fun. fun. Yeah, great. Um, also during the month of September, our friends are going to be busy having their fall used book sale. Right. Also very popular. Um, our friends of the library are amazing, wonderful people that fundraise for us. And all of these programs that we're talking about today would not be possible if we didn't get the fundraising dollars mm -hmm. from our friends because they pay for them. Mm -hmm. um, and so please come out and support them September 17th through the 21st um, and shop the book sale and take home some great finds and support our friends. So that's again September 17th through the 21st. And then um, we are having a couple more series of our one, two, three, play with me program. Yeah, we're really excited. For the first time, we're offering our one, two, three, play with me program for two sessions. 
kind of back to back. We're offering an evening session for the first time, so mm -hmm. it'll be great for working parents. Perfect. Um, mm -hmm. They can come and enjoy that time and enjoy that time together. The one, two, three, play with me is basically a chance to play with your child and to have a casual environment where they can interact with early childhood specialists. So we invite like nutritionists, um, speech language, um, People, even like a childhood dentist has been there um, and they kind of mill around in the room and answer any questions on a more casual basis instead of having to sit through a lecture it's a lot more one-on-one right. -on -one, um, and very catered to what the parents are looking for so that session is going to start on September 25th um, it's Wednesday evenings it's available at 630 and then it'll be available at Thursday mornings at 10 o'clock starting the week of September 25th but you can register starting August 26th at 9.30, so. so. Register early. Register early, it does tend to fill up, um, but we're hoping with two sessions we'll be able to accommodate um, a lot of families. Great, yeah. and that um, targets kids uh, ages one? One, two, and three, that's two why the three. name one, two, three, play with me. Perfect, yep. mm -hmm. okay, awesome. And I am also very excited because we are going to have, we're bringing back one of our popular events again, but we're having it in September this year, and that's our author and illustrator fair. Yes, um, that will be Saturday, September 28th from 1 to 4. And it is, as Karen said, a big event, especially if you enjoy books and reading and writing. Um, we will have uh, probably 20, 25 author and illustrators local, you know, from the Metro Detroit area will be sitting at tables talking about their books, signing their books, selling their books. And it's just a lot of fun if you enjoy books. So I hope you stop by. Yeah, it's always neat, um, especially if you've read a book, to then meet the person who wrote it. Mm -hmm. I've always found that fascinating to kind of get that face behind right. the yeah. behind the pages. Or get a signed so. copy. That's get a signed fun. copy. Yeah. yeah, that's wonderful. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, and then um, with bringing back our Sunday hours, we're going to have a really special program, a couple of special programs mm -hmm. with music, um, some yes. concerts on Sundays, right? Mm -hmm. We try to have um, something every month on Sunday, and this fall we're doing two concerts, and they both actually our jazz concerts. So this will be the fall if you like jazz. Um, on September 29th at 2, we're going to have Jazz Cycle Sunday. And on November uh, 10th at 2, we're going to have the Phil Hale Jazz Trio. So come enjoy both of those concerts. Wonderful. And those are, um, again, free, free thanks to the friends. Mm -hmm. So perfect. Um, so also we have a lot of really great things happening for our teens. Um, Sabrina is doing a great job with our teens in the, in the Orient community, so she's going to tell you more about that. So take it away, Sabrina. Thanks, Karen. All right, guys, I'm Sabrina Halsey. I'm the teen librarian here at Orient Township Public Library. It is the beginning of August. School's going to be starting soon, and I'm really excited for fall because it's my first fall here with Orion Township Public Library. Um, we have a jam-packed schedule all the way through December, and I can't wait to share it with you guys. So for starters, we have Geek Club. That is going to now be two days a month. So the first Tuesday and the third Tuesday of the month will be Geek Club, but we are changing it up a bit. We The new time will be 6.30 to 8 instead of 7 to 8.30, so just make note of the half hour time change. We also have ThinkLink after school coming back. One nice thing about that is all 6th through 8th grade classes are welcome. So it's not just 6th graders anymore, 6th through 8th grade, talk to your school secretary, get on the bus, and come have some good times with us after school. We also have a teen advisory board that's starting up. Those are going to be on Mondays, the first Monday of the month. One nice thing about that is you get six extra volunteer hours just for participating. So those 40 hours that you need for graduation, you just take six away just for participating in the Teen Advisory Board. We also have some fun things coming up. We have Nailed It Teen Edition. So bring your friends, come on. We're gonna have a baking contest and the best part is we can eat what we bake. We also have a STEM challenge coming up. We have uh, Day of the Sugar Skulls, where we're also going to decorate sugar skulls that can also be edible when we're done. We have an ugly sweater craft night. We also have another after hours program. In November, we have the cosplay movie night. It's going to be from five to eight. We're going to pick a movie from the library. We're going to have pizza, some soda, and we're all going to dress up in our favorite cosplay attire. We also have the haunted house coming back. So I've never done the haunted house, but I hear it's a lot of fun. So for all you teen volunteers, you can come for the setup on Saturday, October 19th, and then you can dress up Monday through Thursday, October 21st through 24th. In the evening, we'll be having the haunted house from six to eight. 
We have a few campfires coming up. We have one in September and one in October. They're gonna be in our reading garden. They're really laid back. We're gonna have s'mores. We're just gonna talk about our favorite books and we're just gonna have a good time. And lastly, we have an SAT practice exam. So that will be on Saturday, September 8th. And we will be having a practice test for those of you who are taking it in November. Um, or even later than that, we are gonna have Sylvan Learning Center come here, give you the test, and then they'll come back a few days later and they're gonna score it for you and give you the results. So as you can see, we have a pretty packed schedule and I can't wait to get started. Back to you, Karen. Thanks, Sabrina. So we look into October and we are taking our show on the road a little bit, aren't yes. we Beth? Yes, we've been trying to partner with area businesses um, we advertise the class, but it's held at the business. And this month, or in October, we're partnering with Heritage Spinning and Weaving downtown for an intro to knitting class. So you'll sign up through us, and it's October 3rd and 10th, and it's a beginning knitting class, and you will make spa claws. So um, just a way to involve the businesses with the library. That sounds really fun. So mm -hmm. if you've never knit before, they'll teach you how. Yes. Kinda. Okay. They're the experts. Yeah, absolutely. Very cool. That'll be fun. And then um, tell me what create with your crew means, Miss Suzanne. Yeah, so we kind of thought of a fun idea. Sometimes we offer programs for little ones, for little bigger ones, but we wanted to create a program for everybody where ah. everyone can kind of create together. Cool. So that's the name. So if you have your family, your family, um, whatever you've got, we want you to come together to the library and you're going to make together a unique piece of art. It's it kind of family. features. <laughs> Family is like friends and family, oh, like all um, mixed okay. together. So. Sorry to interrupt. That's okay. <laughs> it's good to clarify. Um, it's going to feature like um, mitten art, so oh, it'll cool. have the state with the UP um, in a fun little way that will make it um, something you can take home and maybe frame. Hopefully, if it turns out great. Oh, cool. um, so yeah, it'll just a time to to play and create together, and all the supplies will be provided there. Awesome. And Very it cool. is October fifth at ten o'clock. Okay. Very good. And then I'm so glad that we are also offering our Cook the Book mm -hmm. um, again in October. Yeah, it's been a popular program where people um, select recipes from a certain cookbook and bring enough to share and then um, they all meet and eat and discuss the recipes and cooking. Um, October 7th at 7 p.m. Um, they'll be just, uh, it's going to have an Asian theme. So there's a couple Asian cookbooks that you can pick from. Well, I will say it's a popular um, program among staff that work on Monday yes. nights. Yeah, it's <laughs> delicious. <laughs> I get to try these things as well, so mm -hmm. that's wonderful. Um, and then we are also bringing back our repair cafe. Mm -hmm. And that is going to be on Saturday, October 12th. It's probably the third or fourth time we've offered it, and it's always been popular. Anytime between one and four, you can bring in items that you have that are broken, and instead of tossing them, we will try to repair them. Volunteers repair them. We don't make any guarantees, but usually the majority of items they can repair, and it kind of teaches people to practice sustainability. Instead of throwing it away, try to fix it. Yeah, that sounds like a great idea. No registration, just drop in with your item. Okay, great. Yeah. And then we start getting a little closer to that Halloween time, and we've got a program on the creatures of the night. Yeah, we are going to, on a Sunday, October 13th at 2 o'clock, we're going to have the Howell Nature Center visit with the creatures of the night. So usually you have to stay up late to see these yeah. creatures, but not today. They're going to come on that Sunday to the library. They're going to bring, bring a variety of nocturnal animals so that you can kind of see what their life Ooh. is like, how they live, and um, cool. get a chance to see them. So it'll be really fun. Cool. So that's on the Sunday afternoon. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Sunday afternoon, the 13th, October 13th. Very good. Awesome. And then after that, on Monday, October 14th, um, we actually are going to have the library closed that day because the staff is going to spend a day together learning um, mm -hmm. for a staff in-service day. So we take one day out of the year, um, every year, and we bring everybody together for a chance to learn um, from each other and from outside sources so that our staff can continue to provide the best service possible to our community. So we will be closed on Monday, October 14th for our staff in-service day. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we are going to be, um, we have something called Paranormal Michigan coming mm -hmm. up as well. That's kind of continuing with the, or maybe beginning, the uh, Halloween theme. Sure. Uh, Detroit Paranormal Expeditions is the name of the group and they're going to talk about haunts in Michigan. Um, they're going to discuss the type of equipment they use and also talk about some of Michigan's most haunted locations. 
these kinds of topics are very popular in our community, I yeah. believe. Mm -hmm. We've they, had I similar came, kinds of topics. and It might have been the same group that came last year that we were shocked. I don't remember how many people came. But yeah, yeah. It's, it's fascinating just mm -hmm. to see these, uh, these, <coughs> these topics m mentioned. You just want to make sure your house isn't on the list. Right. Hopefully not. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Speaking of haunted houses, um, we are going to create our own again this year, that's right? Yeah. Um, and that's always fun. Mm -hmm. So how does that work? Well, the teens are the ones that decorate. It's a, a haunted house for young children or for anybody up to fifth grade, but the teens decorate it and they also come in dressed up and are haunted. So this will be on Monday, October 25th through Thursday, October 24th, 6 to 8. Um, anyone can go through ages birth to fifth and families, of course, parents can go with them. It's usually a lot of fun for everybody involved. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and usually they ask the teens how scary do you want, or they ask right. the kids how scary do you want it, mm -hmm. and the teens accommodate um, how scary mm -hmm. the kids would like yeah. to have it. Yeah. Um, so they can make it as, as easy, easy or as scary as, as wanted um, right. kind of thing. And if so. you have a teen that's interested in something like that, it's good. Yeah. They can also can get volunteer hours, contact absolutely. us. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Right. So we're looking for teens as well as the little kids to go through mm -hmm, it. So mm -hmm. Great. <coughs> and then how many people have an Instapot at home? I do not. I do not. <laughs> I'm starting to think I should get one because everyone else seems to have one. They do so talk yeah. about so it. So we're doing a program on it. Yeah, this, will, this program's titled Cooking in Your Instapot. It is on Saturday, October 26th at 2. And as uh, Karen said, it is the new cool appliance, I believe. And a culinary instructor who owns Taste, a cook's place in Northville, Michigan, will talk to you all about it and take any fear you have out of cooking with an Instapot. Awesome. Yeah, they're supposed to be able to cook really fast. And so yeah. for th those of us that have busy lives, might be the way to do it. Mm -hmm. And then the next one we're going to talk about is a great way for um, spending time with your loved ones mm -hmm. um, that might be aging. Yeah, the title of this is Making the Most of Memories, and it's geared towards people with Alzheimer's or dementia and their caregivers. It's on Monday, October 28th at 6.30, and they'll be making a memory book, um, which is kind of like a record of the individual's personal history. All the supplies mm -hmm. are going to be provided. We would like um, registration for that one so we know how much to have. Yeah. And also, you will, we will supply a list of items to bring, too. Oh, okay. That's, cool. yeah. That's great. I might have to... Might have to come to that one. Okay. Very good. And then, of course, Halloween wouldn't be complete without our story time and parade, right, Miss Suzanne? I know. I mean, there's nothing more adorable than those little guys in their mm -hmm. little costumes coming yeah. to the library. They love it. Um, so yeah, please. Um, it's one of the, our funnest activities that we do in the year. So we'll have everybody come on October 31st at 10, and we'll do a story time together. We'll do some songs and some stories. And then the best parade in town that day will be at the library. We'll kind of line up and we parade through the library and they'll get little treats along the way. Yeah. No tricks, just treats at okay. the library. <laughs> yeah. And awesome. staff love it too. We yeah. just love it's, seeing all these little kids. Yeah, it's adorable. So mm -hmm. yeah, and it's so, a great time. And it's not weather dependent, which right, is always questionable inside. that time right. of year. So, so if you're looking for a nice um, place to come for that. Right, if you want to be able to wear your costume without your coat over it, right. come to the library <laughs> in the morning. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So, okay, awesome. So we are going to have lots of Halloween fun at the library. Um, and then Miss Lori is doing something really cool, um, Michigan Libraries for Life, and we've done it in years previously as well, and she's going to tell us all about that again coming up. So take it away, Miss Lori. Thanks, Karen. The library is again pleased to be part of the Michigan Libraries for Life campaign coming up this year, October 10th through the 16th. Libraries across the state will be participating to inspire residents to join the Michigan Organ Donor Registry. Volunteers and staff will provide information and fun giveaway items, just like this little heart squishy ball, um, that'll be there as well. So to create awareness and help library patrons sign up as organ, eye, and tissue donors. We are honored to again be also receiving a Memories from Michigan donor family quilt, which tells the story of organ, tissue, and eye donors through panels personalized by their families. This is such a nice addition to our um, display in the lobby, and it really is a, a very moving thing to have, and people and our patrons have always loved seeing this. The Michigan Libraries for Life started in 2010, and since then over 150 Michigan libraries have participated. Over 2,900 people are currently waiting for an organ transplant in Michigan, and libraries are such a natural place for people to go for information, so it's a great match for us to be involved in this campaign. Your decision to donate could save up to eight lives, so I hope to see you in October. 
Now I'm going to send it over to Ashley Lehman, who will share some information about the Thinking Money for Kids traveling exhibit and programs coming soon. Thanks, Lori. This is Ashley here at the library, and I'm pleased to announce the library was selected to host a traveling exhibit put on by the American Library Association and the FINRA Foundation. The exhibit is called Thinking Money for Kids, and it's designed to teach kids and their family about money. The exhibit uses games, activities, and a fun storyline to teach kids about what money is, its function in society, money choices, and money values. The exhibit will have both physical and interactive digital elements. Thinking Money for Kids will open in our lobby on October 20th through November 23rd, and we will also host five different programs that accompany the exhibit. On Saturday, October 26th, we are kicking things off with an opening reception with refreshments and activities. On Friday, November 1st, in the afternoon, we are hosting our own version of a, The Price is Right. We are showing and playing an interactive movie game on Saturday, November 16th with the movie Blink Check. For parents, we have Michigan Education Savings Plan expert coming to the library on Wednesday, November 20th to chat about college savings and what the state of Michigan has to offer. And finally, we are also hosting our full-sized game of life on Saturday, November 23rd. Kids can come in and test out all of what it takes to navigate through financial fun in adulthood. And this will be in October and November and we can't wait to see you there. Now back to Karen. Thanks Ashley, that's gonna be such a great exhibit and I look forward to seeing it. Um, you know, we have a few more things to talk about yet though still. Um, and the first one is our team trivia attorney program that we have over at the CPUB. We're gonna have that one again in November. We are. Um, you gather a team and uh, register your team. We have 10 teams of up to six people and we have trivia put on by the library staff. It's lots of fun. Um, you, win, you can win a prize, uh, even a trophy. Awesome. <laughs> oh, and I didn't give you the date. That's on Thursday night, November 7th at 7.30, as Karen said, at the CPUB. Okay. Very cool. Always a good time and lots of bragging rights involved in that mm -hmm, as well. Yes. And then um, we love to celebrate gaming at the library and so we have International Games Day coming up. We do. It's on November 9th so it's a Saturday and it's most of the day so it's 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. so you can come anytime during that day and we'll have some great games out like our giant Uno. Um, so we'll have a variety of games for all ages so even your little ones can come and enjoy a fun game. Or if you have a game at home that you can't convince your family to play, bring it in and we'll have people that'll be happy to play with you. Um, or you can introduce people to a new game maybe they haven't seen before. So it's just a great way to celebrate, to have some community time together. Um, and Giant Uno, yeah. what else and, do you need? Well, and don't worry if you don't have kids. There's a lot of adult oh, game, yeah, yeah. games that are geared towards adults, all the newest True. games we have. True. A lot of strategy games yeah. and things yeah, like that. Yeah, you've mm -hmm. got a great collection of games. So yeah. mm -hmm. Awesome. So. There'll be something for everyone. Okay, yes. cool. Mm -hmm. Very good. And then we have some other fun happening <laughs> with our program on forgotten <laughs> serial killers. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that is on Wednesday, November 13th at 7, and you enter the dark world of Michigan's forgotten serial killers whose crimes haunted Michigan. There, uh, there's, it's going to be pre presented by true crime author by Tobin Bulk. I can't pronounce his last name, but he's a true crime author and he's going to examine their motives and the crimes, and there will also be books available for purchasing and signing. Okay, well I do love myself some good crime drama, so mm -hmm. you know, maybe there's some, there's, you know, you bring it close to home though, it could be a little scary. I, I kind of like it on TV where I know it's not real, yeah. so. I feel yeah. like Forgotten might be, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll find out, won't we? Um, and then we have a couple other last little things. We have the Friends back to their fundraiser again in November and December. They do their silent auction baskets for mm -hmm. the holidays. Um, they encourage everybody to come out and do some holiday shopping at the library. Mm -hmm. The baskets are always beautiful and they're filled with wonderful donations by local um, businesses and wonderful residents who give um, donations to the Friends for this auction. So thank you to those people um, and businesses who help with us, who help us with that. And then we need people to come out between November 18th and December 7th and bid on the baskets. And um, you get to take home something really wonderful. If you're the highest bidder, you can um, give your donation to the friends in that way. So um, check out the baskets in November and December. 
And then um, also in November, at the end of the month, it comes Thanksgiving. And so we do um, give our staff a little time off for Thanksgiving so they can Thank spend you. time with family <laughs> and friends. So we do close at 5 o'clock the Wednesday before Thanksgiving, which isn't until November 27th of this year. Um, so we're closing at 5 o'clock November 27th. We'll be closed Thursday the 28th, Friday the 29th. But then we do reopen Saturday and Sunday for the rest of the weekend. Um, so you can come back and get all your library materials that you might need. Um, and that is all we have to share tonight, today. Um, lots going on at the yeah, library. So um, as we've been saying, check out library, uh, orionlibrary.org for mm -hmm. all of the details. Give us a call, 248-693-3000 if you have any questions. And uh, if not, just drop on by and uh, we look forward to seeing you at the library this fall. Thank you so much. Thank you.